It's a city with many names. When you talk about Louisville, it's a very rich, very interesting place to live. Some call it Derby City. Muhammad Ali's from Louisville. Jennifer Lawrence, Diane Sawyer, Pee Wee Reese. Others call it the gateway to the South. The happy birthday song. Two women from Louisville made that song. And in 2016, Louisville, Kentucky called itself a model city, promising to change how it policed to heal the broken relationships with its black community. But there are people in this community that don't trust us, and the men and women of this department stand ready to do our part. But what started as a model for success... Louisville was one of 15 cities that stood out for its policing efforts. ...soon became a model for failure. There's two sides. There's a night, there's a day. Breonna Taylor is now a name gaining national attention. They're more worried about protesters than worried about the killers in the West End. I almost thought I was back in Iraq. People were ready to die and go to jail. Maybe three shots of tear gas. Police is at a reckoning in America right now. We just won. Incident away from burning the city down. Black Lives Matter! Civil unrest spreading across the country over the death of George Floyd. 2020's racial justice movement led to a wave of promises to reform policing. An overhaul for to changes to policing. Wow. Better policing, fairer policing. But this had all played out before, in 2014 and 2015. Black men and boys killed by police and demands to change policing. And there is deep-seated police mistrust. Police brutality is at an all-time high. I'm saying something needs to be done. What happened then was an awakening for Louisville, Kentucky Mayor Greg Fisher. And a bunch of us as mayors looked at each other at that time and said, you know, that could happen in any of our cities. Is the it was a moment that we all saw that, you know, we can make some significant changes here. Michael Sullivan was second in command at the Louisville Metro Police Department. We brought together the entire command staff. We looked at it systematically, what we were already doing, what we could add. We are among the first cities nationwide to put our crime data online because we believe in transparency. Trained uh, LMPD in new techniques. Holding more community conversations. Outfitted officers with a body camera. We're adding 10 officers to the community policing effort. Like to Fisher announced a long list of reforms inspired by a national effort called 21st Century Policing. It was based on a 116-page report put out by the White House, filled with recommendations that both the police and activists believe could build trust and legitimacy in the most police communities. The steps I've outlined are part of our efforts to continue to build even more trust between our police officers and our communities of color. In 2016, Louisville's efforts were getting attention. White House is recognizing the Louisville Metro Police Department as among the best in the country. I just want to applaud the men and women for their leadership. They're going to just tell the citizens of Louisville that you have a good department. The Justice Department picked Louisville as just one of 15 cities to be a model for 21st century policing. We were talking to the experts on the leading edge of policing. I thought LMPD was a department that was going in the right direction. Yet, just a few years later, trust in Louisville would drop to new lows. Newsy and the Kentucky Center for Investigative Reporting spent more than a year investigating why Louisville reform efforts went so wrong a sobering lesson as other cities once again take on police reform. Hey, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Dino's Community Connection. This is your host, uh, Bishop Lyons. Dennis Lyons is a pastor, civil rights leader, and radio host in Louisville. People here call him the Bishop. Okay, thank you so much. Hey, y'all, anybody that want to call, you can call 571. Right Today, he's doing his radio show outside a convenience store at the corner of 26 and Broadway. Hey, um, turn your radio on, 1240. I'm talking to you now. 
This is the heart of Louisville's West End, an area of the city where police reforms were needed most. We say, where you live? I live in the West End. Oh, you live in the black neighborhood. You live in the West End, you live in an area that is not too much respected by police and other government officials. So Lyons tries to be a bridge between the West End and police. I have members of the church whose sons are in prison for murder, some are in prison for bank robberies, and then some are victims of those same things. The Lord is blessing me. My role in the community goes from the poor pit to the jail, from the jail to the sheriff's office, from the sheriff to the police station, from the police station down on the streets, and then to the cemetery. From the time you come in until the time you die, the bishop has his hands connected. That's my role in Louisville. Detective, have I met you? Lyons isn't afraid to stand up to the police, and he's not afraid to stand by them either. We're with you when you're right, and when you're wrong, we're going to be with you to help you to get it right. Louisville's commitment to 21st century policing was what Lyons had been waiting for. I said, this is it. 21st century was the Bible for building the relationship between the community and the police. And then if they build community trust, we will help them to maintain community safety. Tonight, an effort to ease any ongoing tensions with police. You've teamed up with the LMPD to make traffic stops safer and educate people about their rights. I think this is the first step in a healing. He rallied hundreds of religious leaders to work with LMPD. And if LMPD held an event, chances are Lyons was there. Hey, Pitts. Tell me about it, buddy. Hey, he's like my brother. 21st century policing also had the support of rank and file officers. 21st century policing just reinforced what I wanted the police department that I worked for to be. Dexter Pitts started patrolling the West End as a rookie officer. He liked that the reforms emphasized community policing. You get out of your car, you walk into the store, you talk to somebody, you make friends with them. These are essential first steps for the police to be seen as legitimate. Show the community you have the same goal, to make everyone safe. I fixed streetlights. I had public works trim trees. I went around and towed abandoned cars. Retired Sergeant Kevin Trees policed the West End for the better part of 20 years. I befriended the drunks. I befriended the prostitutes. I befriended the, the small players. They see everything going on, everything. And if you treat them fairly, they will tell you everything. And that's how you had to police the West End a little with respect. Black-owned businesses once thrived here. The West End used to be very vibrant. But like many urban neighborhoods, the West End fell victim to policies that shut black residents out of economic growth. The black community, we have been underserved in this country for a long time. And guess what happens when you don't have money? Poverty breeds crime. So we talk about the relationship between the black community and the police. The trust has never really been there because of the history. Growing up in the West End, my relationship with the police was not good. As a young black man, you're a target. Will Pitts, no relation to Dexter, remembers what it was like when he was a kid here. Weekly, you will have police come down through your neighborhoods, and you know them because they make sure you know them, right? Everybody, line up. We're searching everybody. We ain't done nothing. Doesn't matter. You guys look suspect. But kids, they become the enemy. This is what the city said it would change. But by the end of 2016, its commitment to police reform would face its first real test. The violence in Metro Louisville is escalating with six more homicide investigations since last Thursday. The highest number of homicides in Louisville than any other year. There have been three shootings, two murders. Louisville's reform efforts were barely off the ground in 2016 when a surge of homicides hit the city, the highest in decades. 
Louisville's 94th homicide. As the body count rose, pressure grew on the city to act. People are begging for the violence to stop. They found a man had been shot. Homicides in the city. Shooting in the West End. Police are still looking for the shooter. Are looking for the shooter. Shooting. Homicides is one of the most difficult crimes for police departments to get in front of. You're constantly questioned and expected to immediately change strategies and tactics that many times take years to really bear some significant fruit. City leaders had a choice, stick with their plan to work with the black community to bring the violence down or use aggressive tactics and risk LMPD being seen as an occupying force in the West End. Their choice would soon become clear when they relied on a controversial unit called the 9th Mobile Division. 9th Mobile Division. Responding to crime wherever they're needed. It was a way to show they were doing something. The unit showed off all the guns and drugs seized to every major news outlet. 162 guns. More than 550 guns. Uh, we've seized over 1,700 guns. Our 9th Mobile Division and the fantastic work that they do for us every day. But 9th Mobile was doing something else. 9th Mobile would run across people that we developed a relationship with. And time and time again, we would hear out of their mouths, well, this one cop stopped me last week and he treated me terrible. Our next interaction with that person was just a little bit more uncooperative, a little bit less helpful. Whereas we were trying to make a difference, they were just doing it for stats. They were jumping out on whatever. You know what I'm stopping you for? Man, when you turned on here on the Dixie, or 18th Street, you turned in the far left lane, you're supposed to turn in the right lane. In August 2018, 9th Mobile officer stopped 18-year-old Tayon Lee for a wide turn. Mama, they taking me out the vehicle. Don't hop out? Get out of the car. They, they tell me to get the out of the car now. What started as a normal trip to the gas station on his day off work... I didn't even did anything. Why are you checking me for? I didn't say you did anything. So you don't have Turned any into Lee, frisked and handcuffed on the side of the road. A canine unit searching his mother's car. No guns, no drugs were found. We deal with violent crime all day, every day. We're going to stop 30 more people after you. This stop wasn't doing much to reduce violent crime, but it was doing something else, burning trust in the West End. If you don't mind me asking, why do you have, like, this negative view towards the police? Uh, a unit like the 9th Mobile should be focused on the most violent people and the most violent places. And, and that doesn't include throwing a wide net and scooping up uh, people that don't need to be scooped up and brought into the criminal justice system. Several accounts of black drivers saying they were harassed. Saying he was racially Officers found Hyper policing the, the, the investigation. It's hard to know just how many others like Lee were pulled out of their car, frisked, and searched by a dog for looking nervous. For at least all of 2018, 9th Mobile Street Squad officers rarely filled out the forms that track this practice. Even Lee's search wasn't documented. We do know that at least four times when guns or drugs were found by the 9th Mobile, courts ruled the search unconstitutional and charges were dismissed. I look back now and say, we probably did some more damage to those communities than we did really helping those communities. After Tayon Lee's stop, LMPD added to its traffic stop policy, merely being nervous or in a high crime area were not reasons to detain and search someone. A lot of people start hating the cops when you're just getting stopped randomly for no reason. And you know, the folks in the West didn't have a point. I dare you to walk through one of our really expensive neighborhoods out there. Let me, let me see you stop them on their sidewalk. So there truly are disparities. According to an internal survey, the majority of officers said LMPD should build community relationships. But our investigation found police leadership failed to make community policing a part of the department's DNA. When you have this drumbeat of crime, uh, of crime being out of control, it does take your eye off reform. LMPD committed just a small fraction of the department to building relationships in the West End. Officers just run from run to run. They can't keep up. They can barely eat lunch. We simply don't have the resources to be able to get out of your car and to take that extra time to talk to people instead of us being called for a, for a bad reason or a negative reason. 
Though 21st century policing said departments should reward officers who build trust, an external review found that LMPD never did. If you're gonna to try to change the perception of a neighborhood, and in my experience, the West End of Louisville, it's gonna take a full-time effort. Yet three years after calling themselves a model city, LMPD leaders had checked off almost every recommendation in 21st century policing. It was for show. It not the officer, it's the system. A disrespect is ingrained in the DNA of the police department. In 2019, LMPD merged the Narcotics Division with the 9th Mobile, creating a new special unit they said would target the most violent people in the most violent places. By the next year, this new unit would kill a 26-year-old EMT, and city leaders would face their greatest test yet. Brianna Taylor and the fight for racial equality. Killing a Brianna Taylor. Shattening Taylor Brianna Taylor. La joven enfermera afroamericana Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor's name has reached all corners of the country and even the globe, a symbol of police brutality. But this wasn't supposed to happen in Louisville, where city leaders had vowed to reform their police department. It was problems before, but Brianna Taylor is really is the case that kicked it over because it was so much mess in it, cover up and lies. In March 2020, an LMPD officer was shot serving a warrant as part of a drug investigation. I want to say that uh, we are extremely fortunate uh, that our officer was not more seriously injured. LMPD said officers shot back. A man surrendered and was charged with attempted murder of a police officer. We have no body-worn video cameras to share with you. Police shared few other details. Uh, we're still working on that, still processing. I can't really answer that right now, sir. The public was left to trust LMPD's version of events. But there's another element of the shooting that hasn't yet been explained. When SWAT searched the home, it found the body of a woman. Police failed to initially disclose that it was officers who shot and killed her. The woman was Brianna Taylor, a young EMT with no criminal record. It came off as a warrant serve went bad, and we were like, who the hell shot a police officer? Shamika Parrish Wright is a longtime activist and community leader in Louisville. We had someone who dedicated their lives to saving lives, killed in the middle of the night where she's supposed to be safe at home. Taylor was never the main target of the investigation. It was an old boyfriend. But it would take months for details to come to light, details that revealed a very different story from the one police had led the public to believe. In a city that's promised transparency, why does this group not wear body cameras? Officers should not have been at the apartment in the first place. Thought they were being robbed. Nothing illegal was found in the home. She worries that LMPD is trying to hide something. And all charges would be dropped against the man charged with attempted murder of a police officer, Taylor's boyfriend at the time. Her family has been since day one saying something's not right, they've been mistreated and lied to. In late May, just days after George Floyd's murder in Minneapolis, Louisville first heard 911 calls from the night Breonna Taylor was killed. Police out here, they are shooting back. There is bullet holes all the way through the wall. I see like crazy. I see some cops coming up the hill. Right here in front of my house. Yeah, I my grandbaby and my kids in here. The glass door is shattered. There's no way to happen if somebody kicked in the door inside my girlfriend. Oh, my God. <laughs> the reaction was explosive. Emotions and frustrations here. Like they are in right gear with batons. What started out as a peaceful protest earlier this evening is now escalating into property damage, more aggressive action, and we've just heard reports of shots fired in the crowd. We have uh, shots fired. We have shots fired. Once it became dark, you had drones flying over you, you had helicopters, lights. Protesters occupied a park in the center of downtown, calling it Injustice Square. Parrish Wright said they intentionally avoided the West End. 
setting up in Justice Square was to protect the West End of town. We knew that any protest down here would further put the West End back. It wouldn't be rebuilt the same. It wouldn't be invested in the same. Stores wouldn't open back up. Day after day, night after night, police fire pepper balls and launch tear gas canisters at demonstrators. They just started firing chemical weapons into the crowd. Protesters threw water bottles, fireworks, and the police's own tear gas right back at them. For LMPD, it was all hands on deck. The SWAT team has arrived here on scene. There's at least 100 police officers here now. But an audit found many officers called to the front lines had little or outdated training on how to de-escalate demonstrations. They are advancing on the protesters. And when LMPD's actions failed to de-escalate the crowds, the mayor escalated the response. And asked Governor Bashir for assistance from the Kentucky National Guard. And by the end of the weekend, there would be deadly consequences. It was close to midnight, past the city's curfew, as protests in downtown Louisville were winding down. We got good music, good food. A few miles away, West End resident Chris Smith was live streaming a party at 26 in Broadway. That corner looks like that every weekend. If you want to find a place to party in Louisville, 26 in Broadway was a spot. 26, Dino's. That's where you could just drive past and smell the barbecue and see the smoke billowing out from his grill. That grill belonged to David McAtee. David McAtee, AKA Yaya, the barbecue man. Yaya's barbecue was a rare place in the West End where residents and officers like Dexter Pitts were welcome. The man fed a lot of people for free and he took care of officers. I offered him money, like your money's no good here, man. Thank you for what you do. Thanks for looking out to the community. Yaya basically befriended the police. Everybody kept problems away from her out of the respect for him. Oh, 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 oh. We got crowd out there. It's going down tonight. Marvin McAtee was there helping his Uncle David prepare food. He was focused on getting these ribs on that grill. Not worried for a second that his life would be in danger. As Yaya was getting ready for the late night food rush, a convoy of LMPD vans followed by military trucks showed up. We start seeing the National Guards, the Humvees, the big ones, few police cars. Police just came. LMPD sent officers in riot gear and guardsmen with assault rifles to squash a protest, when in fact, there was none. There is a such thing as inciting a riot by the police. Get in the car and leave us. I'm gone. So look at my keys. Police jumped out of their vans, and almost immediately, an officer fired a pepper ball into the street in front of Yaya's. People flooded into the kitchen for cover. McAtee's niece stood in the doorway. The officer continued to fire pepper balls, this time at her. Drink cans went flying, then McAtee's niece was hit in the shoulder. He looking at his niece fall back. Whoever just did this can't be the police in his ass, not the police that he be. McAtee leaned out of the kitchen door with a gun and fired one shot. Shot fired, shot fired. And then he fired a second shot. LMPD officers and National Guardsmen responded with a barrage of gunfire. McAtee was struck once in the chest. Get out of the ground, get out of the ground! Crawl, crawl, crawl! He's crawl. dying, Nobody he's dying! Put your hands down. Put your hands down and just wait. But right it now. was too late. David McAtee was dead. They just killed Yaya. Later that morning, a crowd gathered at 26 and Broadway. The energy was pure disgust. McAtee's body still laid inside his barbecue joint. Pick up his body! Pick up his body! Bishop Lyons and others tried to restore the peace. All we gotta do is just stay off the, the street, and they gone. Good. 
How much more do we have to take? You've already killed Brianna. Now you got Dave and Jaja laying over there. What else do we have to take? Where we're from, right? West End. We always have that feeling. Like, why the hell are we there messing with us? Why? Why does y'all come in our neighborhood? I keep him on my mind, man, that's for sure. I got his poster, got him right there. Marvin McAtee kept Yaya's barbecue open, cooking in the same kitchen where his uncle was killed, replaying what happened that night. In my heart, I can look at it both ways. He's not thinking that shot came from the police. He gave a warning shot in the air. And my right man, I'm not going to let nobody be shooting at my niece either. My opinion is unprofessional training made something go wrong that night. The city later changed its civil disturbance policy, adding that officers should aim pepper balls at the ground, not at people. A state criminal investigation found that officers and guard members were justified in their use of deadly fire. 19 rounds were fired at David McAtee by police and the National Guard. The fatal shot was fired by a guard member. People like him are symbols of what's important for neighborhood and community connectedness. And it's also how quickly things can unravel when times get uh, very difficult. The National Guard was in Louisville at the request of Mayor Greg Fisher to help respond to protest over Breonna Taylor's killing. We asked him if he regrets that decision. No, I don't, and here's why. We needed help. We did not have enough police officers to deal with this situation. And so that was the call to the guard. I just want everybody to look at both sides and say, well, let's be real about it. I can't bring him back regardless. I was broken hearted. He would never harm a police officer. A lot of them were his friends. This man loved the police. He was a man of the community everybody looked up to. We all loved him. Now people are mourning, not just the loss of David McAtee. We mourning another loss in our community. Now, Louisville was saying two names. Breonna Taylor! David McAtee! I'm gonna let nobody turn it around. I'm gonna keep on. The world is with Louisville keep right now. The man is just the marching of the freedom The killing of David McAtee only amplified demands to reform policing. Within days, the mayor fired the police chief and required all officers to wear body cameras and announce themselves when serving search warrants. But for many protesters, the mayor had lost all credibility. You're saying you're making these changes, and you just cut off the head, but it grows a new head. We want those officers fired, arrested, and prosecuted. Every day, for four months, they marched on, calling for the officers who shot Breonna Taylor to be locked up. As a decision about prosecutions in the Taylor case neared, instead of calming tensions, the city fortified downtown. The mayor declared a state of emergency. LMPD canceled all days off for officers. And then, in late September, the day finally arrived. On this, the 194th day since the raid that killed Breonna Taylor, it is decision day. The Kentucky Attorney General announced no 
LMPD officer would face charges in Taylor's death. We're justified in the return of deadly fire after having been fired upon. What the hell? Let's see. Mess up. We've been out here. We've been out here. We've been out here. We've been out here. It was injustice from day one because the system was trying to bury their mistake. It wasn't just about this decision. For protesters, the Breonna Taylor case showed how little policing had changed. People were done. They were ready to do whatever it takes to get the attention of those in charge. And I almost thought I was back in Iraq. Seeing multiple people with rifles, handguns, it was terrifying. It literally became a war zone. We're the easy, low hanging fruit that people can blame. Because I'm wearing the uniform, I'm guilty by association. And I just remember screaming, gunfire, take cover. Everybody take cover. Get off the dark. Dexter Pitts was there when two fellow officers were shot and wounded. We were just defeated. The protest went crazy. It went violent. It went vulgar. It went degrading on both sides. Louisville was the very thing it set out to avoid, a city torn apart by violence, distrust, and fear. Daddy! 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 Daddy, look! What's up, buddy? Look. There's been a lot of damage done. I've had my life threatened. I've had my family's life threatened. I don't get good sleep, and when I do sleep, I'm having nightmares, and I'm tired. We're all tired. According to LMPD, from the start of the protest to the end of 2020, officers worked 43 straight years in overtime. Dexter Pitts worked the equivalent of eight extra work weeks. If you're not in the right place mentally, guess what? You're going to get yourself killed, or you're going to make a bad decision to kill somebody else, or put another officer in a bad spot. We have to be refresh when we come in to go do our job and patrol. We have to be, but we're not afforded that opportunity right now. One of the pillars of 21st century policing was officer safety. And honestly, LMPD could do a lot better job. In 2020, LMPD saw the highest number of officers leave the department in a decade, but Dexter stayed. A part of me thinks it's wrong for me to keep doing this job, knowing the position I'm putting my family in. I love this profession. But if I get to a point where I can make money without the stress, would I leave? Yeah. An independent review of LMPD called it a department in crisis, with 75% of officers surveyed saying they would leave if they could. CJ, you up? Go ahead and start getting your stuff together. Brush your teeth, wash your face. Will Pitts also worries about his family. We're living in a dangerous city at this point. I don't want to get shot down in the street. I don't want to get the phone call that uh, somebody has killed my son. I'll see you in a little bit, babe. Homicides in Louisville soared in 2020, reaching an all new high. The West End was hit especially hard. A man got killed down here in the alley. He said a murder at 26 in Elliott at, at Dino's. Uh oh, here, listen. There's a shot. Hi. The spot. Another one. Beautiful. Look at that. Look on the points. They didn't move. How accustomed we are to what we just heard. 110 on Now that's what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. Broadway, 27 Broadway, 5 real. 
A few months after David McAtee was killed, his nephew Marvin was shot and killed across the street from Yaya's barbecue, another victim in the city's rising homicides. Now, two McAtees have memorials on 26 in Broadway. Why has there been almost nothing done? There isn't a heavy police presence now that the, the crime is rising. They blame it on lack of uh, staff. We don't have enough officers. But this is my question. Where are the officers that y'all do have? In April 2021, the new police chief had some answers. Homicide detectives were overwhelmed. Shooting victims weren't talking to police, and officers had lost confidence. We're still responding to calls. We're still coming to help, but we're not being proactive right now because we are terrified of what happens if we make a wrong decision. We're seeing what happens when officers are afraid to work. The black community in Louisville is suffering now more than ever. By the spring of 2021, after a year of the pandemic and protest, parts of Louisville were ready to move on. Eyes were on the city again. It was Kentucky Derby Week. But others weren't ready to forget. We're still being brutalized by the police. And neither was the Justice Department. The Justice Department is opening a civil investigation into the Louisville Jefferson County Metro government and the Louisville Metro Police Department. That same week, Louisville again had the attention of the DOJ, not to celebrate the model city, but to investigate it. Unreasonable force, unconstitutional stops, searches and seizures, discriminatory conduct on the basis of race, and unlawfully execute search warrants on private homes. A sweeping review into whether LMPD routinely violated its citizens' civil rights. There's so many facets, so many steps that could have saved the relationship. Bishop Lyons still carries his copy of the 21st Century Policing Plan. It's now worn and tattered. You ever heard of a cow giving a good bucket of milk and kicking it over? That's what the police does. They come up with something, community on the police, yeah, and we say, thank God, and they take it and they kick the good bucket of milk over, and we got to stop it. I'm 70 years old. I was 18 when Martin Luther King was assassinated. I've seen the protests. I've seen the cities burn. What are we doing sitting here talking about the same principle, the same dynamics? We have to continue to press. And we press and we press. Our kids are just pressing harder than we ever press. After the DOJ announced its investigation, he started seeing a renewed interest from LMPD in building community trust to make the West End safer. And holds, this time, it's different. We still need justice for Breonna Taylor. No justice! Now, they've seen the protests go on for a year and a half. The killing, the fires, the revolting. They have seen what can happen if they continue to ignore the plight of African-American community. Clearly, we're not a perfect police department, and I haven't met a mayor or a police department that is yet either. After a decade in office, Mayor Greg Fisher is in his final term. He's described the federal investigation as a positive collaboration with the DOJ, not an indictment of his leadership. I really regret the tragedies. Right, that have taken place. The question is, when you're knocked down in life, which everybody is, as a city or as a person, then what do you do when you get up? Since the killings of Breonna Taylor and David McAtee, 
He's made several reform promises. The police community legitimacy and public safety. Like embracing community policing. Transparency and accountability. More transparency into police shootings. First Amendment rights. Protecting citizens' safety. First Amendment rights during protests. An early warning system. And creating an alert system to identify officers who need counseling or more training. Though many of these police leaders marked as accomplished years earlier. There is more awareness and knowledge of the need for reform and change now than I think any time throughout my lifetime. And so what I see, the opportunity coming out of this, is to be a model city in terms of police reform. Will we be smart enough to seize that? And will city leaders be strong enough to stick to the playbook they had all along? For LMPD, that means embracing the best practices in 21st century policing, and understanding that community trust, community trust, must be at the center of every policy and every police action. But now Louisville has even more work to do than when it first called itself a model city, aggressively policing the West End for years, failing to invest in community policing, misleading the public about the Breonna Taylor case, a militarized response to protest, all of this undermined the goal of reform, destroying trust between the police and residents. It has to be a bridge that people don't mind crossing either way. We don't have that here. Will Pitts and his wife started a nonprofit, helping people who've been overcharged by police clear their records. People in positions of power. They come to the West End, they make all the laws, they make all the rules that we have to abide by. But those are the same people who are the most disconnected to the West End. We are going to say we are voting for who? Shamika! Right, Shamika for mayor. Give her a round of applause. Let's hear it from our kids. We deserve better, and we get there. I would describe the West End as a place with a lot of beautiful people. If given the chance, there's scholars, there's authors, there's doctors, there's lawyers. If we don't help each other, who's gonna help us? We know what we want. We know what we need. I'm gonna do my part, and uh, that's all I can do. Thank you.